Welcome everybody. We are so excited to have you here this evening. Uh, many of you know me, but I'm Gail Schorsch. I'm founder and director of Bronx Eats. And I'm so pleased that you've chosen to spend part of your evening with us tonight. Uh, a big thank you to Giselle Payne. Giselle, can you say a quick, can you wave and say hello? Who organized this four week series and she will be leading a short chat after the class tonight. So please stick around for that. My background is terrible, but good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, Chef McGill, I'm so excited for this um, just, recipe. Uh, Hello, um, and um, thank you for guys for joining us. I hope you enjoy today's, of course you're gonna enjoy it because um, it's gonna be delicious. Um, <laughs> but yes, so I will turn on my camera as soon as my background is like presentable. But thank y'all. Sounds great. So it's great to see all of you. Some of you are regulars. Some of you are here for the first time. This is a growing community and we welcome all of you. Uh, food is a great reason to get together and Bronx Eats is here to offer you healthy, traditional plant-based foods that you know and love and also introduce you to some dishes that you may not have thought to try. So please take a minute before the end of this class to fill out the survey that I'll put in the chat box and that will really help us make our programming for the future. It's anonymous, so unless you choose to give your name, you do not have to. Uh, Bronx Eats is a safe place to meet, to learn and connect with each other around food and cooking. It's a shared community gathering place where we can start to find our footing again in this new world while still living with the harsh reality of COVID. Tonight, we are having a chat, as I mentioned, with Giselle, and Giselle is a Bronx Eats intern and earning a master's in public health at, at Andrews University. Um, so we will be excited to introduce Chef Donald McGill, and we invite you also to stay after class tonight to uh, talk with us. Um, she's kindly offered some of her time, and we're going to have a discussion about health, about COVID, about food, about nutrition, anything else that's on your mind, you can talk with us and talk to Giselle about. Uh, so again, we come together for events like this to send a message to ourselves and to others that our health matters to us and that we value our time together in community and that we value our local cooks and chefs and that we're gonna take care of ourselves on a personal and community level. So thank you so much for showing up for yourselves and for this community. A few housekeeping notes, we're recording this presentation. Uh, you can ask questions directly of Chef Donald or if you prefer to use the chat box to ask your questions, that is fine too. Also, it really makes it more personal if you can keep your, um, video on. Uh, it's not required, but this is a class that really feels more connected if we're able to see each other's faces. So please turn your video on if you are willing. Um, also, last thing, uh, one of my partner organizations, Plant Powered Metro New York, has a few more spots available for a 14-day Plant Powered Jumpstart program in June. It's in Spanish. I don't know how many people on the call speak Spanish, but this is a really exciting program to learn how to eat plant-based uh, recipes and make the make more dishes. So if you're interested in that, I'll put that in the chat box and you can follow up. And now without further ado, let me introduce Chef Donald McGill, who we're really so honored to have here tonight. Um, Chef Donald, uh, they say about Chef Donald that the food he creates is not only a passion, but a true gift from a higher calling. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure that we are going to experience that uh, this evening. So thank you so much for being here. Chef Donald has been an executive chef for over 25 years. He graduated from Johnson and Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island, where he received his associate's degree in culinary arts. He has worked in four star restaurants all around New York City, including the 21 Club, Mont Rache, the River Cafe and Metro Cafe. Chef Donald trained with renowned celebrity chefs such as David Burke, Michael Lomonaco, Drew Nieperent, Alain Sailhack, Jeffrey Zakarian, and the late great Patrick Clark. He has built an outstanding reputation within the food industry as an expert in nutritional based gourmet menu planning and high volume food production. Chef Donald has dedicated a major part of his career serving people living with HIV and working in the nonprofit sector. Due to his direct involvement in the HIV community, 
Donald has acquired an expertise regarding their unique nutritional needs and chronic illness in general. In addition, Donald is the founder and manager of his own professional catering and private chef business called Creative Cuisine Management Inc. In his spare time, Chef Donald is a culinary arts instructor, presently teaching farm to table cooking to young adults and to residents who are afflicted with mental illness and substance abuse. He also works with the Sylvia Center and Keys to Abundant Life after school programs. So I could go on all evening about this unbelievable human being. We're just delighted, truly delighted to have him here with us tonight. And without further ado, take it away, Chef Donald. Well, hello everyone. And Gil, you make me sound like I'm a celebrity chef. That's you are a celebrity chef. <laughs> Listen, for Bronx Eats, you're a celebrity chef. You have your mother who lives in the Bronx here tonight. We're so delighted, Esther, that you're here. And you are actually a celebrity chef. So Wow, you you're a great you're a great hype person. I feel I feel energized right now. Well, <laughs> thank you everyone for joining our class today. And uh, today's class is going to be surrounded by co car I'm sorry, carrot oatmeal cookies. And just to tell you a little bit about the ingredients, it's going to have oatmeal. Uh, it's going to be made with whole grain flour. Um, it's going to have baking powder, ground cinnamon, nutmeg, a pinch of salt, coconut oil in place of butter. Um, it's going to have egg whites in place of egg yolks. Um, so it's going to be a lot healthier for you. Um, you're going to have vanilla extract. It's going to have maple syrup as the sweetener. It's going to have non-fat milk. And it's going to have a grated carrot. Now, just to tell you a little bit about the nutritional value of some of the things that we're going to use today. Oats is amongst the healthiest grains on earth. Okay? They're gluten-free and they're whole grain. And their benefits include weight loss, low blood sugar. It helps with low blood, low blood sugar levels. It helps reduce heart disease. Okay? There's nine evidence-based benefits of eating oatmeal. You have manganese, Phosphorus, magnesium, copper, iron, zinc, folate, vitamin B1, vitamin B5. And these are all great antioxidants to help build a great immune system. Carrots. Carrots, wild carrots are called dakis carota. Okay. In one from which the carrots were domesticated. Okay. Back when carrots were first introduced to society, okay, they were known for their aromatic leaves and their seeds. We weren't actually eating the flesh of the carrots when they were first introduced. Carrots are amongst the top 10 economical important vegetable crops in the world because of both their production and their market value. Now, nine health and beauty benefits that carrots promote. They help promote your, they help boost your immune system. They keep your hair happy and healthy. They create glowing skin. They prevent wrinkles. They protect your teeth. Now I never knew, I know, I know that they protect your eyes and they help you retain 20-20 vision. I never knew that they help protect your teeth. So that's a good, something good to know. They nourish your dry skin. They protect skin from the sun. They reduce the look of oily skin. Now health benefits of whole wheat. It's a great source of protein. It helps with the digestive system. Okay. And it's a good carbohydrate. Cinnamon. Cinnamon helps promote immunity. It helps with cholesterol. It helps with high blood pressure. It also, it's a great antioxidant. It helps relieve inflammation in the body. So all of these things contributed to being much healthier 
living a healthier lifestyle. And all of these things are going to be in this cookie. That's amazing. <laughs> we talked last week about cinnamon a little bit and how it's an anti-inflammatory. And I have a personal experience with cinnamon because I was suffering from sciatica and I used to drink just boiling water with a tablespoon of cinnamon in it. Mm -hmm. And I mix it up like a tea and drink. Right. And the cinnamon was so helpful for just what you said for reducing inflammation. It's kind of this unknown or lesser known way to deal with pain and inflammation. So I, I love cinnamon. Exactly. Inflammation in the body is the cause of a lot of pain. Okay. Usually when you have pain in your joints, pain in your muscles, some tendons, it's usually due to inflammation. And if you can add cinnamon, turmeric, ginger, garlic, stuff like that to your diet, you can help reduce the inflammation in the body and reduce the pain as well. All right, so without further ado, I will start combining all of my ingredients. So in this bowl, I already have my oats, my whole grain flour, my ground cinnamon, my baking powder, and my salt, and a pinch of nutmeg. Okay, now I'm gonna start introducing the wet ingredients. So one of the things I mentioned is egg whites. So in order to get to the egg white, we have to crack the egg and we have to separate the egg white into the bowl. And the one way that you can do that, you would just flip the yolk back and forth, push all the white goes into the bowl and out of the shell. And voila, you have egg whites. And I save my egg yolks so I can make scrambled eggs in the morning. So I can put that aside. Excuse me, Chef. Yes. Chef, why not yes. have the full egg? Why not? So what we're going to do is we want to, cut, we want to cut the amount of cholesterol that we're putting into the cookie. So that's why we're not using the yolk. Thank you. Okay. So if you didn't care about cholesterol, could you use the full egg? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You could so definitely use the full egg. watching their cholesterol, you yeah. take it out. And for people who don't care, you can leave it in. Right. All right, so what I'm going to do first. Uh, excuse gonna... me. Yes. Uh, I, I can see that the ingredients are from your table. I would oh, like yes. to see. Yeah. So Chef Donald, we were saying they could use the other camera, right? Is that still on the video? Oh, yeah. Oh, do you want to still see the other ingredients? Yeah, we, we can see your face, but we can't see the ingredients. So if there's a way to um, have your phone on the way we were. Yeah, you have to go on gallery view to see mm -hmm. his. No, I'm sorry, screen. it is on. So if you see where it says Chef Donald, not not Donald's face, but it says it. Chef Donald, you can pin it. Can you see that? Is that better? Not quite. I can't see. Henrietta, if you look at where it says Chef Donald, and you go to the three box at the top of the of his of where it says Chef Donald, you can see him stirring. You see that? So I just want to fluff the egg whites a little bit. Okay. And now I'm going to start adding my other ingredients. I'm going to add my maple syrup and my vanilla extract and my maple syrup. You always want to have good measuring tools because when you're baking, baking is a precise measurement and you always want to make sure you're adding the right amount of ingredients. Otherwise, the recipe will not come out correct. So it's a little bit of maple syrup. And that's going to be the extent of our sweetener. So Chef Donald, we've had a few questions um, in the past about whether you can substitute honey or agave. Oh, absolutely. You can you can use you can use coconut sugar, you can use regular sugar, 
You can use stevia, uh -huh. use honey, agave, anything that you like. But for this particular recipe, from this particular recipe, maple syrup is perfect. Okay, so we have our egg white, our maple syrup. Nope, let me just unmute you. Sorry, wait. Um, Chef Donald, can you unmute yourself? Thanks. I'm sorry. We we okay. uh, I had to mute people because there was noise. But um... okay. All right. So now I have my milk, my vanilla extract, my egg white, and it also gets a little bit of coconut oil. So I had to melt the coconut oil in the microwave. So now I'm going to add it. So for people who don't have a microwave or don't like to use a microwave, is it okay to do that on the you stove? Can, you can just melt it in a saucepan over medium heat until, it's, until it turns liquid. Okay. If people do have questions, you can unmute yourselves and ask your questions. I just didn't want to have background noise, so I right. did mute you. So now that these ingredients are ready, I'm just going to put them aside so I can start grating. I'm going to start grating my carrot. And I'm going to grate my carrot with a box grater on the smaller side. You always want to grate carrots fresh. If you grate them too far in advance, they start to turn colors. So we want to grate them while it's fresh. I've already, I've already washed and peeled the carrot. And you want to make sure you keep your fingernails out of the way. We don't want any fingernails in our cookies. So when you get down to the root, you just want to use your fingertips. Want to turn it. And the reason why I do it on a piece of parchment paper because then I can just pick up the parchment paper and add it to my bowl. Tricks of the trade. Yes. And it's easy cleanup. Well, I'm going to let you guys on a little secret today. I usually don't give out my secrets, but I'm going to add toasted coconut to this. So toasted coconut. You want to take coconut flakes, put them on a cooking sheet. You want to pop it in a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes and they're gonna make the most luscious golden flakes. And these are gonna add a texture variety to the cookies. So I'm just gonna add a small handful. And then I'm also going to top the cookie with a little bit of coconut. And it's gonna give that crunch to the cookie on top. So that's my secret to you today, free of charge. <laughs> We appreciate that. That adds some sweetness too, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay, now I'm going to add my wet ingredients to my dry ingredients. And I'm just going to fold that all together. So if anybody wants to unmute, them, unmute themselves and ask Donald, questions, please feel free. Otherwise, you can put it in the chat box. So the cookie dough should look like cookie dough. It should look like, like a cookie batter. 
Okay. Now, this recipe calls for the batter to be refrigerated for a few minutes to set up. I actually like my cookie to spread a little bit when I bake it. So, for time, for time constraints, reasons, I'm just going to bake it so that the cookie can, can spread nicely. Chef Donald, there's a question about whether you can add raisins. Oh, absolutely. The more, the more the merrier. You can also add chocolate chips. You can add pecans. You can add walnuts. Providing you, providing that you're not allergic. So I'm going to take an ice cream scoop. It's a one ounce ice cream scoop. And I'm just going to scoop. I'm going to flatten. I'm going to flatten on the side of the bowl. I'm just going to scoop it onto the cookie sheet. And this is on parchment paper. So parchment paper, I don't have to spray it. So I'm not adding any extra cholesterol, any extra calories. And it helps for cleaning up, right? It doesn't stick. Yes, up. absolutely. So there's a question that came in, Chef Donald, about what is the difference in baking time if, if you chilled the batter or not chilling it? Is there a difference? If you chill the batter, it'll probably take two to three more minutes to bake, opposed to leaving it at room temperature. You can get the cookies cooked. The cookies cooked. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Yeah. <laughs> He's cooked in about three minutes or less. So here's the other secret that I'm going to do. I'm going to crumble up a little bit of this coconut and I'm just going to sprinkle it. And this is almost going to be like a macaroon. You ever had macaroons, macaroon cookies? Yes, delicious. Yes. Now, are is... there alternatives to the eggs for? people who are vegan? You can use applesauce. Okay, Giselle, you hear that? Vegan, you can use applesauce. Yeah, you can use applesauce. Okay, and I have at least one person in the house who's vegan, but uh, for those then of I'm just gonna take my fork and I'm just gonna ever so slightly press that coconut into the cookie. Because we want that coconut to be part of the cookie. We want it to stay crispy on top. And voila, this is going to go in a 350 degree oven for 13 minutes. Beautiful. And how much applesauce would you add if you wanted to uh, sub substitute? I would add about three ounces of applesauce for the same amount of egg white that I'm using. So what is that, about two tablespoons? It's about uh, three tablespoons. Three tablespoons, OK. Three tablespoons. Yes. So Chef Donald, um, yes. speaking about. Whoops, we lost your audio. Substitutions. So if you use, you use two egg white. I use one egg white. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Okay, so if I'm if I'm using a whole egg, I would just use one egg as opposed to two egg whites. Is that correct? Yes, but I use one egg white. So oh, you use one egg white. Okay. I use one egg white. So you can use one one. I use one large egg white. So you can use one medium egg, would, which would make the equivalent of one large egg white. Got it. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. So. As I explained to Gail in the beginning, I said, if I run into having some extra time, I wanted to share another recipe with you guys called vegan golden milk. I don't know if you guys are familiar with golden milk. It's another milk that you can make or another beverage that you can make that 
has lots of antioxidants and it helps with inflammation as well. And it's a great drink to have with these cookies. So the recipe has ground turmeric, ground ginger, cinnamon stick. It has coconut milk. It has almond milk. It has golden milk with cookies. Exactly. It has a pinch of salt. It has a little coconut oil and it has some black pepper. So the for the black pepper, the black pepper helps transport the antiox antioxidants into your bloodstream. That's why we're adding black pepper. So if I wanted to go with fresh ginger, this is fresh ginger, in case you guys are unfamiliar, which I'm sure you guys have seen fresh ginger. This is fresh turmeric. Fresh turmeric is a tuber, which is very similar, right? They look almost the same because they're in the same family, okay? They both provide the same amount of antioxidants, same amount of inflammatory properties. So, but today for the golden milk, we're gonna use ground because it's easier to dissolve in the milk. So I'm gonna grab a sauce pot. And I'm going to turn my camera to my pot. So did you set a timer for the cookies so we know when they're done? Yes, there's 10 minutes left for the cookies. We'll be there soon. <laughs> and this recipe takes five minutes. So let's see if we can get it done in five minutes and then still have a few minutes left for the cookies. Okay, and this recipe calls for one can of coconut milk. You guys see? So it gets a cup and a half of coconut milk, a cup and a half of almond milk. It's going to get a few tablespoons of ground turmeric, a few tablespoons of ground ginger. It's going to get a cinnamon stick. It's nothing like coconut milk. Now this is unsweetened coconut milk because again, in order to make this recipe connect with my cookies, I'm going to sweeten it with maple syrup. So you're not even measuring, you're really just using a 15 ounce can and putting it straight into the pot, right? This is a 13 and a half. 13, 13 and, okay. So People basically, are excited about your recipe. They yeah. want the recipe. Yeah, it's about a cup and a half. And then you can get us to that, Chef Donald. You'll you'll get us the recipe. Oh, absolutely. Then it's a cup and a half of almond milk. Okay, actually, I, to, I can actually uh, right at the end of this class, I can I can send you an email of the recipe. How about that? That sounds amazing and I'll forward it to everybody. I love this idea that you can have cookies and milk and not have it be dairy. You know, a lot of exactly. people are, are trying to avoid dairy. A lot of people are allergic to dairy and uh, dairy in general is something that uh, we don't need, need in our diet as much as we've had it in our diet. So this is just such a great way to be able to have a milky feeling without eating dairy, without consuming right. dairy. So we're gonna add a cinnamon stick. I am going to put the survey in the chat box for those of you who don't mind. I would really appreciate it if you could fill it out before the end of class. Okay, it gets two, teas two tablespoons of maple syrup.
Mm-hmm. And for anyone who is recreating this recipe, definitely email it to us so we can put it on our social media website. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Giselle is the queen of Bronx Eats social media. So if you make these delicious uh, recipes, you have to share pictures with us. Uh, Gail at bronxeats.org. Just you can email me back where you got the Zoom link. Just email your picture and we will share it on Instagram. We love to do that. You can share it with all your friends too. Yeah, it gets a pinch of pepper. Like I said, the pepper is going to help transport antioxidants. It gets a little bit of coconut oil. The coconut oil is going to help also transport the antioxidants. And then last but not least, we're going to add some ginger. Ginger is a nice spice. So you're using dried ginger, right? Yes, I'm using dried ginger. Only because it dissolves much faster than fresh ginger. Fresh ginger, I would have to pulverize it. Then you just want to whisk that together. And you have that on low heat? It's on medium heat. Beautiful. And you just want to bring it up to a simmer. And that's it. It's done. That's why it's called five minute vegan golden milk. And it's golden in color. I don't know if you can actually see the color. It looks amazing. So there's a question about what ingredient you put in before the pepper. Um, I believe it was turmeric. Turmeric. I'll put that in the chat. Turmeric is also a great inflammatory. It can go in rice. It goes in so many dishes. Great spice to know about. Now, cookies are about four minutes away. And we're going to have cookies and golden milk. Chef Donald? Yes. What, uh, what was the length of that cinnamon stick? Because it depends on, you know, because they're all different sizes. Uh, it's about three inches. Thank you. About, about the size of my finger, about three inches. Got it, thank you. So I, I found out about golden milk. I was shopping at one of my favorite supermarkets called Wegmans. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Wegmans. Specialty supermarket has a great organic section and they have many different venues within the supermarket. They have, they sell sushi, they have a uh, pre-prepared section, they have uh, uh, a pizzeria, um, they have a coffee bar. Um, so they were advertising golden, golden milk shots. And I was like, I'd like to try that. And it was being advertised as a great inflammatory blocker. And when I tasted it, I fell in love with it. Yeah, it's got so many ingredients that are anti-inflammatory, which is how you introduce this class, right? It's got the cinnamon, it's got the ginger, it's got the turmeric, it's got the no. garlic. No, garlic, did you put garlic in or ginger in? Ginger. 
ginger, right. So it's got all of the, so many of those ingredients, which. Right. Are... So I asked, I asked the, the person that was behind the counter, I said, is there any way that you can give me the recipe? And it was like, I don't know the recipe. <laughs> I was like, well, how are you selling that you don't know the recipe to? So then, of course, that made me look up a recipe. And I found a great one that's not only healthy for you, but it's vegan. So. We'll just call it Chef Donald's Golden Milk. Well, we could do that, too, since, you know, since I'm already sounding like such a celebrity. Okay, so my milk is smoking. It's about to break a simmer. As soon as it breaks a simmer, I'm gonna shut it off. And it's gonna be ready. And then my cookies have about 20 seconds. I have this grater, this grated. I have my grate on top of a sheet pan. So when I put my cookies, they cool much faster. But well, we do want to remind people if they don't have a grater, they can still make these cookies, right? Oh, absolutely. Here goes my cookie timer. Okay. Okay. Whoa, look at those, bravo. You get a little brown on the bottom. Yum. Just still nice and soft and chewy. But that's what you want in the oatmeal cookie. You want your oatmeal cookies to be nice and chewy. You don't want them to be too crunchy because then that means you over, you over bake them. That looks delicious. Um, my question is, what if you wanted to double the recipe and have more on that pan? It seems like there's room, no? Yeah, you can put about eight cookies on here. Eight um, cookies. Or you can just use a bigger pan and do about a dozen. But the recipe does make a dozen cookies. Um, I only scooped out half. Um, and I'll bake the other half tomorrow. Because if I bake them all today, I'm going to eat them all today. <laughs> <laughs> we can understand why. They look amazing. They look and then that would, defeat the, that would defeat the purpose of being healthy, right? Eat all the cookies at once. OK, so I'm going to set up a plate so I can put my cookies on. I'm going to grab a mug so I can show you how this all comes together. Jeff Donald. Yes. I'm thinking a little rum in there will make it a nice toddy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it definitely will make it a nice toddy. Okay, you could add a little rum. And you can still keep it vegan, too. <laughs> Chef Donald, I have a quick question. Would this recipe work if you substituted a different kind of vegetable? Like if you put in maybe zucchini or you did a combination of zucchini and carrots or do you need to really stick to carrots? No, you can make it with butternut squash. You can make it with zucchini. You can make it with spaghetti squash. Um, you can make it with a bunch of different, you can make it with figs. You can make it with um, pears, apples. And you would just chop up the pears and the apples into the small shape of that you did with the carrots, you'd grate it? Yeah, I would grate the apples as well. Beautiful, can you mix and match? Could you do carrots and apples? Oh, absolutely. Carrots and apples go together great. See, you can get your vegetables all in a cookie, you guys. You didn't know that until tonight, right? 
If you make enough of them, you can get a whole serving of vegetables. Okay. So I'm gonna just scoop some of my golden milk. So while we're waiting, I'm putting the survey one more time in the chat box, please fill it out. It literally will take you 30 seconds. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah, carrot oatmeal cookies with a sprinkle of coconut and golden milk made with turmeric, ginger, and cinnamon sticks. It looks delicious. I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> We're ready to come over for dessert. I hope you guys enjoy this. these recipes. And I will email the recipe for the golden milk to Gail. Actually, I can do it right now. Excellent. You can do it later because I can't email it to them right now anyway. But okay. uh, I want to thank you so much, Chef Donald. Uh, beautiful product. It really looks like uh, restaurant quality. And uh, we know that eating fruits and vegetables is the best medicine of all. And that consuming healthy, real food instead of processed food strengthens our bodies and our immune system and our moods and uh, putting our vegetables into cookies is a perfectly good way to do that. Um, diet is critical to preventing and even reversing many chronic diseases, including heart disease and diabetes. So we're here at Bronx Eats to really learn how to make better food choices together. Um, we're doing this for ourselves, we're doing this for our families and we're doing this for the planet and it's not out of reach and we can do it together in community. So, uh, Donald, thank you so much for introducing us to this beautiful cookie recipe. And thank You're you uh, for joining us tonight. Please stick around for a chat with Giselle, which is going to be starting uh, right now. And if you choose not to stay, we hope to see you again next week for Deborah's class. Chef Deborah is actually on the call now, and um, she's going to be here same time, same place next week. Just make sure to register if you haven't already. And please tell your friends. Um, that's it. Eat real food, stay healthy, and I'll see you next week. Chef Donald, thank you again, and uh, hope to see you all again soon. Stay on the call, please, if you do want to stay um, for Giselle's chat. And otherwise, we'll see you next week. Bye.